Thanks, David. Um, as Paul was speaking this morning about all the challenges and things going on with collaboration, I thought um, Shelley and I and the other two organizations, we've really walked that talk and lived some of those experiences and we're really happy, um, I guess it's this evening now, to uh, share that journey with you. So there were, uh, there are four of us involved with this uh, uh, journey. I guess we'll just no, keep I'll going. Go Sorry. No. Uh, I'm with the Alzheimer's Society in Belleville. Uh, Shelley's with Community Care for South Hastings, the Meals on Wheels transportation folks. And because we're right next door to the CCAC, we have to be very clear that <clears throat> these are the Meals on Wheels transportation folks and, and keep it straight. Providence Care is involved with their community outreach teams and the VON with the adult day program and the ambulatory clinic and the depot for nurses who travel around. So it's been a long journey and it started uh, back in 2005 uh, with Community Care for North Hastings and we're glad to have Roxena here um, representing Community Care for North Hastings. Gord McDonald and his predecessor were involved in designing a physical space um, to house Community Care for North Hastings, the VON Adult Day Program, and they invited, well, I'm not sure who invited who, but the Alzheimer's Society. We had gotten funding from the ministry for a half-time person up in Bancroft and were looking for a place for her to have an office and this came up and it worked really, really well. People came in to talk to Sarah, worried about some memory problems. As things progressed, they needed some help in the home. They would go over to Community Care North Hastings who were right there saying here's some uh, programs that might be helpful. And uh, then as things progressed, they needed the adult day program. They'd already been into the office. They'd heard the laughter coming from that section of the building. So they knew it wasn't a scary place to go. So if it worked there, why couldn't it work in Belleville? So about 2008, it was uh, sending out the dance invitations. And of course, the first uh, folks that we wanted on board was Community Care for South Hastings. Um, we serve similar folks who, uh, who need um, Meals on Wheels and transportation and friendly visiting and all the things Shelley does, uh, VON Adult Day, and we uh, reached out to Providence Care community outreach teams, particularly um, geriatric psychiatry who were just down the road from where the Alzheimer's Society was. So I met Shelley. And I had come from Vancouver and I'd been involved in a, a similar, similar sort of collaboration out there whereby there was uh, several um, programs and services under one roof and a couple of different agencies. So I thought this is just wonderful and so I immediately said I want to participate in Laura's Vision. So we uh, sent d dance invitations uh, far and wide. Um, we asked about Hospice Quinty, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, diabetes, mental health agencies, other seniors groups, just sort of as many email addresses as we could find, we shot out an invitation. Um, and we also kept the Lynn informed that this is what we would like to do and they were very generous in uh, supporting a feasibility study that went from 2011-2012. And we had a community engagement evening in November of 2012 and once again sent out the invitation far and wide to get feedback on were we going down the right track, here's what we're thinking, um, to get some true community engagement. But it wasn't all smooth roads and this is when uh, Paul was speaking, I was thinking of the, the speed bumps that we encountered and of course the first one's money. It costs money to move, it costs money to have meetings, um, and that was always sitting there on the table. Another one was building the trust between organizations. Um, we all sort of knew each other, but as you can imagine, we're pretty different. I mean, Providence Care is this enormous organization in Kingston with 1,000 plus employees, and the Alzheimer's Society has seven. So we're really different but we did get to know each other and personalities are a big part of this. The four of us that sat around the table really, I don't know if we were peas in the pod, but 
really sort of straight shooters and and whenever the, the speed bumps got a little heftier, we'd always go back to why are we doing this and just think how wonderful it's going to be for those folks that walk in the door and there's the Meals on Wheels and there's their um, chat about dementia and we can bring in um, expertise from Providence Care. And when we, we the whole um, tenor of the conversation would change because we get excited about the possibilities and those speed bumps would lower down and we say, okay, how are we going to get through this? Fear's another one. Uh, oh, has anybody done this before? Um, we're used to running organizations. We're not used to doing collaborative um, projects. And uh, someone spoke with a question about the workload. Well, we're still trying to run what we're supposed to be doing all the time. How can we possibly put this on top? And then in a very practical sense, uh, the first time we started talking about this in 2008, particularly Providence Care said, ah, oh, our lease isn't up until 2012. Like, oh, you know, that's way off. And here we are in 2014. I was saying about the different sizes uh, that Providence Care has a huge depth. They've got financial, they've got legal, they've got IT, they've got people who know how to make phones work. Um, a big part of it is they uh, provided a project manager for when we actually got to the renovation stage because, I mean, we, we may look good in hard hats, but we don't talk the language very well. Uh, media relations was another one when it came time to get the word out to the public. Very professional um, write-up on, on the exciting news we had. I think you were going to do the next class. Okay. Uh, so I guess the next part is mine. The other thing is um, the IT piece of it. We don't, we look good in, on different hats and wear a lot of different hats, but we're not experts at a whole lot of things. So we got a lot of support from the IT uh, through Providence Care and through the CCAC. Um, with regard to, you know, housing, for example, a server um, from our organization, which I now share with Laura, so <laughs> I share everything with Laura. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's, it's those big pieces, and, and some of them are small, but it means, you know, their organization, for example, doesn't have to go and spend $20,000. We've already done that, so we can share all those kinds of things, and the CCNC has been wonderful at doing um, just some tech work for us, and, and um, they house, like I say, our server in a nice air-conditioned room where it's safe and locked up, and, and um, we have access to their back door so we can get in and change our backups every day, so that's great. Um, the phone system, our, uh, our partner from Providence Care, they had a little bit of money left at the end of last year, so they uh, quietly went off and spent it all buying a whole ton, I guess about 50 mm -hmm. um, digital handsets that, again, none of the organizations on our own could ever afford a system like that. And it's been set up by the, uh, the IT people between CCAC and uh, Providence Care again. Again, things we couldn't possibly do and manage. Um, and the project management has been mentioned and uh, the media relations has been mentioned, but yeah, it's, uh, they've been wonderful. And if you think of trust being one of those items that was a bit of a speed bump, imagine how much trust had been built for Providence Care to take any, get permission to use a year-end sur surplus to buy 50 phones a year ahead before we even moved into anything. Um, you want to do that one? Okay. Um, and just so you think that Laura and I didn't sit around and do nothing, um, we did all a lot of the smaller pieces, things like writing the grant applications, um, calling people, asking where we could get money, doing research. Um, we set up the credit line uh, through the Alzheimer's uh, Society in case we didn't quite have enough dollars to go around, which was wonderful of them. Thank you. Um, the local connections, we knew all the people at the local level. We knew who to reach out to when it came to, A, the feasibility study, who to invite to the, um, the community engagement of that piece. Um, we knew the people at the bank. We opened the bank account and, and uh, you know, look after the day-to-day -day kinds of things for the organization. And we're always on site, which is another thing that's important, I think. A special mention to the CCAC, Rob Allen from their uh, IT group sat on our committee as things were coming together and what we needed, and he said one day, you know, Shelley, Laura, Jackie Redmond's moving her office back to Belleville, and they're closing the third floor of the building at John Counter Boulevard. You know, there's some furniture they're trying to get rid of. Well, 
how fast were we in we the car? Were, we were fast. <laughs> and so we had tables and chairs and whiteboards and a uh, pull-down screen and uh, desks. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have Jackie Redmond's desk. <laughs> it fills the entire office space. Um, and Rob's expertise with the, the phone system and the IT, but, but it was a lot of fun going down there and saying, yes, I'll take that, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that. And what it opened up for us is Shelley had got an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant and we had listed, here's all the things we need. And she was able to go back and say, you know what, those four desks that we needed, uh, we got them for free, so would you mind if we used that money and did other things? And we did some really smart buying by putting in more power doors. Um, you know, we serve seniors who arrive in walkers, and there's nothing inaccessible like a walker and a real plain old door. A very heavy door. Mm -hmm. Um, we used a dating analogy through this thing, and in September 2013, you might have called it our um, engagement party, and you'll notice how good we all look in those hard hats. A uh, big funding announcement, the Parrot Foundation locally uh, gave us $400,000 um, to this project, so you can see why we're all smiles. So, uh, we're taking on a little tour now. This is the plan, and in your handout there on the inside, um, this is what, uh, what we look like. Uh, we've learned since we moved in in March that um, people are a little uncertain about which entrance to come in, but we are learning. So on the lower left, or on the very bottom, is entrance number three coming into where Shelley and I are, and that's how beautiful it looks. Part of the fun of this collaboration was coming up with this Crossroads to Care logo, and uh, everybody chipped in and Googled and, and had a lot of fun with it, but we're very proud of it. So we share reception, and those are free chairs from the CCAC. <laughs> we share a little kitchenette at the back. And I'm the only one that knows how to run the dishwasher. <laughs> and we had a volunteer clean out the fridge just before Thanksgiving, and, and I know Shelly grumbles a bit about how dirty the, the fridge gets, and so I... I saw her on Tuesday and I said, oh, you know, we got the fridge cleaned out. She says, where are my apples? <laughs> and this next picture is one of our smiling uh, coordinators. And uh, according to your diagram, we have six small offices. They're all the same. They're all clustered around a, a single hallway and all the coordinators are housed in there. Um, but they're very happy and they quite like it. Uh, the Alzheimer's Society has a lending la library near the front. And when somebody comes in and says, do you have any information on, I'm like, Laura, do you have a book on grieving for this person? And guess what? She does. This is our comfort room. Uh, we did have a, the same setup in our old office, but this is a place where the site of the uh, aquarium just gets people to sit down and say, oh, here's how bad my week was last week and a lovely example of what we were hoping to have in this um, collaboration was a brother and sister came in. Sister lives in Ottawa, brother lives in Costa Rica, mom has early stage dementia, and dad had just had a very bad stroke and was in the hospital. So the brother and sister had arrived, and how are we gonna straighten this out, and what do we need? And they talked to the Alzheimer's Society, myself first because of the dementia, but it really turns out that their mom was in very early stage, and what they really needed was some meal support, some transportation. So I said, well, just a moment, please. And Irene, who you saw in the previous picture, came into this room. I left. And this brother and sister were just smiles that the service had been brought to them. And I danced out of the room <laughs> thinking, all these years of working towards this, this is the kind of situation that we were hoping to create, and there it was. That's one of our offices. And then on the north side is an entrance to the VON area. Uh, this is the pictures of the adult day area. And uh, part of this, one of the larger speed bumps, 
was um, the plan to put in overnight respite at the adult day program. So this is a Murphy bed that's closed up. And as soon as everyone heard that there was going to be overnight respite, all the fire regulations changed. And the bill went up and up and up for um, sealing in uh, all around the adult day. That was a big speed bump. This is uh, the adult uh, ambulatory clinic. And they had moved, if you've ever been into the clinic down on Pinnacle Street, they were working with um, curtains, in behind curtains, and now they have real rooms. Then entrance number one is a dual use entrance. If you go to the right, you go into the Providence Care area. And if you go to the left, you go to Meals on Wheels. And that's been a bit of a training exercise on pickups and drop-offs, where to go. And this is Providence Care. There's a lot of people at Providence Care on a typical office for them. And they have a little kitchenette. And that's their boardroom within Providence Care with the OTN system. And then this uh, is the shared spaces in the middle. So we call this the Ontario Trillium Foundation, recognizing um, their contribution. That's got uh, OTN as well. And that's the old board table and chairs from the Alzheimer's Society, in which in our old room, we couldn't put it all together in the whole oval. It wasn't big enough. And the OTN by donated. Yeah, Providence Care supplied the OTN. And that this is one of the rooms that uh, didn't get a paint job too much because it, it was already there, which is a staff kitchen. And that's a free fridge and a free dishwasher. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and free tables and chairs. Yes, that's right, from CCAT. Um, this is a, our smallest meeting room that we've called the BMO room um, after the Bank of Montreal. And this is our biggest room, and uh, Shelley, Shelley uses it the most. Yeah, our agency is definitely the parrot room pigs. Um, anyway, <laughs> this lovely room, it, it seats about, uh, I would say, 65 to 70 people. We use it once a week for our congregate dining program, which is lovely, and we use it once a week for our activity group. And um, you know, if they have a meal, we can prepare it there as well. So because behind, behind those uh, uh, oh, what do I want to call them? Folding doors is actually our commercial kitchen, but you'll see that later. So in our excitement, when we talk about possibilities, we talk about this room being used by all of us for education sessions. So Shelley's group does uh, um, 55 Alive driving, so we could bring in a component about driving and dementia, work together on that. Folks at Providence Care have a, an education session on depression, and so we're looking at what can we put together and bring those experts in and provide public education here. And I forgot the winter driving. I forgot to mention we're also doing the winter driving workshop that uh, Gary Magwood does for us once a year. And it's surprising, we've already had, I think, about five staff from VON sign up for this. Um, and we're always looking for more money. Uh, we have a meeting room without a name, so if any of you would like to come up with big bucks to have your name put on this room. Um, and through the CCAC, we had a connection to purchasing this table and 10 chairs at an extremely reasonable rate, and delivered, set up, and everything. I don't think I paid them. Shh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> And this is our wonderful commercial kitchen that took forever to get everything together. And again, thank you to the Lynn. Um, they finally gave us the money so we could do this. Uh, Trillium had helped out with a bunch of other things, but they couldn't uh, manage this as well. So the Lynn did come through for me, and I, I really bless them for that. Anyway, we have uh, we serve our, our prepare our meals on wheels on here in here, and so there's about 100 hot meals go out of here every day. We do the congregate dining cooking in here, um, and we're currently working out some other options to maybe do some partnering with our with my partner in crime here to do uh, some food for the walk for memories or other things like that. So and for the educational session, so it's great. And that's not the end of our Crossroads to Care journey, but it is the end of our slideshow.